So I'm assuming you clicked this video because you're trying to figure out how can you route and get visuals from your PC or console at a further distance or further display in your house. Maybe you have your office somewhere and so you would like to still use that same PC without having to lug the PC around and bring it to the next room just to play it. In my case, I just moved into a new house. My office is on the second floor and I'm trying to be able to use my PC all the way down on the first floor of my house, hooking it to an LG CX, my living room TV. So I'm gonna show you how to go through all of that, how to do it the easiest way, what tools you're gonna need, what materials you're gonna need, and I'll go over where you can get the materials for all of this, whether it be from, you know, Amazon or even local shops like Harbor Freight or Home Depot, Lowe's. Now, I ran all of the setup all myself, essentially, and I did all the testing. Everything works perfectly. Full bandwidth, HDMI 2.1, Dolby Atmos works perfectly, DTSX works perfectly. So you're not losing anything with this process. And I traveled the cords with about 100 foot. That's pretty impressive. I'll show you how to do that. Without further ado, let's get right into it and I'll show you the first step, which is materials. This is the materials and tools list. The materials I purchased online, I'll have in the video description. It's just for you. I won't make a dollar off of them. I'm gonna go through the material starting with this. This is the video cable that you're gonna wanna grab off Amazon. Now this cable right here is a fiber optic to HDMI ended cable. It's also an HDMI 2.1 cable, so it'll pass through every video and audio codec that you want it to do simultaneously. Now there's a couple of things about this cable, specifically why I chose this cable. First being, over 100 feet, you're not losing anything. Now also, the video cable at the same time is pliable. It maneuvers well, you don't have to worry about it bending and getting stuck. It's a nice thin cable and it's gold plated. Now number two, the reason why I wanted this cable over other cables on the market, the fat HDMI end comes off and it reduces it to a mini HDMI end. Well, when you have to get this cable through a wall, you don't have to drill such a big hole. And then after you drill your holes and run the cable, it's literally as simple as pushing the HDMI tip back on. Now lastly, with this cable, you have to know, there is a source side and there is a display side. If you have this cable backwards, when you run it, it will not work. Now for item number two, this is ethernet cable, CAT6 specifically. With the HDMI cable and this, you're gonna measure to see how much of it you're gonna need. With this CAT6, you can buy it per foot at Home Depot here. When you're done, you're just gonna buy these RJ45 clips to attach to the ends of the CAT6. Now for item number three, these come in a set. These devices carry the USB signal over that CAT6 or ethernet line that you're gonna run. This allows you to hardwire your peripherals all the way back to the PC from where you once started. The next item you're gonna need low voltage old work style junction boxes once those are installed you're going to put these brush plate covers over it just so you can get wires in and out of the wall and have more of a clean look here's some things you could use but not need cat 6 wall plate covers if you want to run the cat 6 separately than the hdmi or an hdmi 2.1 switcher tools needed starting off you're going to need a tape measure to measure the cat 6 and hdmi lengths a ladder in case you're coming from the second floor to the first floor a drill a 12 inch 9 16 and quarter inch drill bit or those regular size drill bits and a 12 inch drill bit extension you need to be able to get in to outside of the house a stud finder could help a razor knife keyhole saw or something to cut the drywall silicone foam or fireproofing with coaxial plugs then some siding screws and quarter inch cable clips so you can run the wire nice down the exterior of the house and then you're going to need a cat 6 or rj45 crimper this is the crimper here if you don't have one maybe a friend does and if you don't you should be able to call national grid or your isp and they should come over to clip the ends on your cat 6 lines for you so let's get started First and foremost, you're gonna figure out where your PC is and where you want it to go. In my case, I'm running from the second floor to the first floor. I'm gonna run my cables down to this wall specifically here. This is an exterior wall of my house. 
I'm going to run the cables through this wall, down and around the house, back into the first floor where my living room is. And then they'll route back here to the PC, that way everything's hardwired back. Now starting off, you're going to figure out where you want to put your holes. You're going to grab a level on these old work style boxes. Grab a pencil, stencil around the inside of this box. Then once that's stenciled, you're going to find the center line and drill one quarter inch hole and one nine sixteenths hole with those long drill bits. Once those holes are drilled, you're then going to cut out that square stencil. That hole in the wall will be replaced by these old work style boxes, these low voltage boxes. These ones specifically have a flange where you just fold up and it wraps around the drywall and this is what fastens this box to the wall. The other style I showed you, the orange ones have screws where you tighten the screw clockwise and that's what'll snug it to the drywall and hold this box in place. It will essentially look like this. You'll be able to put the brush plate cover over top so you can pass cables through nicely. So I made this diagram for you. If you follow this, you can't mess it up. Starting from the right to the left. Starting from the PC side, you're going to take your CAT6 and your HDMI and push it through one of the brush plate covers. You don't have to fasten that to the wall just yet. You have to remember to do it after. Once those lines are ran through the brush plate cover, you're then going to take your CAT6 and push it through the quarter inch hole that you drilled in the wall and repeat the same process for the HDMI via the 9 16th hole. If it's an exterior wall that you're going through, Slip the coaxial cable plugs onto both lines and then push those back into the house. Then you're going to pull the excess back through the house of both leads, run them around wherever you need them to go, and then repeat the process coming back into the house. And then just button them up with the quarter inch cable clips and the siding screws back to the house to clean up the lines. Essentially looking like this, coming off my PC, running the cables to the wall, then we're going to go through the wall here, back to the exterior, coaxial cable plugs on the cables. Now I have an extra Cat6, but don't mind that, that's my internet cable, so I'm hardwired with that as well. You see, kind of cleaned it up a little bit. My video cable is that black one, I'll come back to that in a moment. This is the USB line, this is going back into the first floor back into my living room, hardwiring it right into one of the sets of those boxes. At this point, the ends have to be crimped on your CAT6. Now that all of your lines are ran, let's focus on these devices. And the first one is your peripherals box. This one comes with a five volt plug that helps amplify the signal, being that this box could be up to 165 feet away. The second one is the PC host box, and it comes with this USB A to A cable. One plugs into your PC, and then the other back into the PC host box. Then, to backhaul them, or make the hardwired connection, all you have to do is connect the CAT6 into one box, and then the CAT6 into the other. CAT6 running to box one, and then on the other side of that CAT6 cable where you ran it to, you're going to plug it into box number two, or the device box, and then also plug in the 5 volt power plug into the wall that helps amplify the signal. Now I made mention of how I would come back to that black HDMI cable and how I routed mine differently than the CAT6 cable. So I routed things a little differently to get my HDMI easier to my display and my CAT6 to where I want the peripherals. My inlet wall was under my couch and my TV was across the room. I routed the video cable out with the CAT6, but I went up through my basement to the back side of my TV because I had access to it. Now yours may not be the same as this, so this part is up to you on how you are going to run these cables. For me, this was the best way without having to run an HDMI cable across my living room floor. Now with all that said, let's jump into the real world use. Now your device end should already be plugged in, so grab your source end and plug it in to your graphics card or your console. Then fire it up, make your way down to wherever you routed your cables to see if you post an image. Grab your peripherals, start plugging them in. As you're plugging in, you should start to see the blue lights light up on that box. That's indicating that indeed your peripherals are working and communicating all the way back up to your PC. Then go ahead and 
click on your display. My PC image posted instantly and the Dolby Atmos badge popped up instantly. Now I'm just going to jump in the settings, show you everything is indeed working. HDR, going down here into the graphics, default settings, VRRs on and working. Pull up the secret menu on my TV. You can see 120 hertz, G-Sync, 4K at 120 frames, RGB, which is HDR and 10-bit color, NVIDIA control, G-Sync. Everything's working perfectly. Again, showing you 4K, 120 hertz, enabled. Now we'll test out the input lag. As you can slightly see here, but more so here, over 100 feet of cable doesn't matter what I'm typing, everything's super quick and responsive with no lag. Now going down here, show you the Atmos is up and working. I had the same sound for this, but I had a lot of background noise, but you can see it flash, Dolby Atmos badge. But now let's try some gaming. Grab my DualSense Edge. You can see all three blue lights are on for my peripherals, indicating that everything's working. G-Sync bar on, 120 hertz, all working. RGB, controller working. Jump over to the settings. Now I'm only doing this to show you everything was maxed out. Ray tracing. The reason why that's important is everything is working the way it's supposed to via this cable and I'm not having any screen tearing, VRRs working perfectly, while HDR is on, all my settings to the max, and again here, Dolby Atmos at the same exact time, running this at 100 feet. This is more or less to show you proof of use. We got me grabbing the controller, hitting some buttons on the controller. You can see the controller's working. Again, the secret menu on the controller working, VRR, 4K, HDR, G-Sync compatible. Then I'm gonna run up here, up my stairs, back up into my office, and you'll see the HDMI cable is indeed the cable I told you to buy. So I hope this helps you out. It is doable, it's not impossible. It may look hard, but I promise you it's not really that hard. I swear it. Maybe this will help somebody, and I do understand not everybody's going to be coming from a second floor down to a first floor, or vice versa. This goes the same for somebody that's just running cabling along the side of their room, maybe just to get to their bedroom TV or something. The cables that I listed, they all work for that same process. If you like this video, give me a follow, drop a like. I'm going to have much more videos coming. It's taken me a minute to get them up, only because I'm very particular and anal about how I'm posting things and trying to get quality up and QC going, but I appreciate it. Later.